Welcome to Technology and Education Today. I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford, and we are coming to you from the University of Houston Clear Lake in Houston, Texas, USA. And we're talking with Dr. Michelle Kahn, Yay! Associate Professor of Multicultural Education. And Michelle, a lot of people have different ideas about the definition of multicultural education. Can you just give us an overview of uh, what mm. it means to have multi multicultural education in a school? Okay, sure, be happy to. Um, multicultural education is a, a lot of things. It's a process, an idea, uh, a theory, but uh, no matter how you explain it, it's all focused on equity in schools, mm -hmm. on uh, achieving social justice for all kids. Is social, is, well, how about educational justice? Well, it is part of, uh, having social justice is part of educational justice. Okay, so what's a situation mm -hmm. where if I have a class of students mm -hmm. and I have not implemented multicultural education, how would my class look in that instance? Um, well, it's not, multicultural education isn't about, let's say, implementing a class in school. It's about looking at what goes on at the institutional level, the social level, and at the individual level. So we look at things like uh, curriculum, who's designing the curriculum and who's included in the curriculum. We look at uh, how uh, students are taught, what kind of pedagogy is the teacher using. Uh, who is the teacher focusing on? Who is the teacher not focusing on? How are the tests designed? Uh, are they asking the right questions? Do, are they aware of their own biases? Uh, and, and that sort of thing. It's a very dynamic. So I think this is a problem that a lot of people have is people like package things in multicultural education. I, I like package things. Yes. <laughs> it's a constant process because it involves uh, human beings and uh, constructs like gender, class, sexual orientation, uh, religion, and many other things. Ethnicity. Ethnicity. All the hot topics. Yes, yes. Is there a lot of self-evaluation that is constantly occurring within your field? Yes, well, hopefully. <laughs> it should be, <laughs> right? And that's what I encourage students to do, is actually uh, take stock in what their own beliefs are. And biases and limitations of exactly, processes. Exactly, exactly. Oh. And that, that's really a key component to uh, achieving ed educational equity, is for teachers to be aware of that and understand how it shapes their classroom. Knowing the right questions to ask, I think, is really important. Well, what is your area of research? What do you uh, find intriguing at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I'm looking at uh, some research on facial expressions. I know this is sounding uh, a bit. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> I, I used to make good facial expressions. Not good for me. When I was in junior high. And now I, blank. I, I was excellent at it. But uh, I'm looking at nonverbal communication and how that influences uh, perceptions of intercultural competence uh, in the classroom. Oh, so looking at um, An engagement of the instructor and how engaging the instructor is willing to be with the students and that exactly, type of thing. Exactly, exactly. Oh, so that's cool. my argument really is that we have to have many multicultural ed courses for our teachers because even though we can expose them to a lot of different ideas, it takes time for those ideas to really sink, uh, in. sink mm -hmm. in, for teachers to process that. And if we don't take the time and invest in those teachers, then those, let's say, ideas that may be biased in a negative fashion towards the students will come out in nonverbal behaviors. Um, so there's a, a, a brain, you know, mind, body connection Absolutely. going on that, that we have to, yeah. to connect and align. I so uh, if, if I have a class... Richard can't stand not being the center of attention. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a question. So... That I, that I, I bet other people are thinking also. If I have a class of students mm -hmm. where some of the students are native-born uh, Americans, are born here in mm -hmm. the United States, others come from a variety of, let's say, uh, Latin American uh, mm -hmm. countries, some from Central America, some from North America, some from South America, and then there are a few Asian students in there. Not an unusual situation uh, mm -hmm. these days. How, what, what, is, what should my general behavioral outlook be when I deal with 
with the students from the, that are all in the same class from these mm -hmm. varieties of cultures? Exactly. Uh, and that's a great question because this is an area where people tend to get confused. So I think there are classes that go on that say, well, you know, Hispanics learn best this way, so you need to do these activities. Wow, and, that's a little offensive. Uh, Not one of my favorites. African Americans <laughs> learn this way, so you should focus on these activities. And that is really, I think, the, the wrong way to go. Everyone's an individual, and I think the I'm best so thing. I'm so glad to hear you say that. that yeah. <laughs> thank you. It, the, best thing I think a teacher can do is just to get to know his or her students. Uh, have spaces in the classroom where students can speak and have a voice and go from there, co-construct the learning process with the students, I think is very important and successful because we want teachers to be trained in their content area, but the effective domain, uh, how the schools are run, who does the curriculum, but teachers need to understand this and understand how to change it and what part they play in a student's education. Well, I can see where this could get very, very complicated and, and sensitive because if we have, let's say, um, students, girl mm -hmm. students, young girl students mm -hmm. from uh, countries where girls are taught not to be assertive, mm -hmm. And the teacher, to be fair, I was taught that too. Didn't yeah, take, but I was obvious, instructed in that obviously, manner too. Obviously didn't take. And, 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 the, <laughs> and the teacher is uh, trying to get all the students to participate mm -hmm. equally. Mm -hmm. I can see a situation where the, the girls from a, who have come from a country where they're not supposed to be doing that might feel very, very uncomfortable. Sure, absolutely. And uh, in these cases, as far as uh, having participation, there are a lot of reasons people might feel uncomfortable in uh, participating in different ways in class, so it's good to have alternatives. And really it's about not assuming that all students want to be evaluated in the same way or will perform, perform to their fullest potential in, in the same way. So uh, I think that's another key element. It's just not making assumptions about uh, students that, that are in the classroom. Well, yeah. it, it seems to me that multicultural education is a lot more than what most people think multicultural education is. Absolutely. And uh, in the classes I've taught, it, we touch upon really uh, controversial issues, which I don't try to make controversial, but everyone has opinions about uh, who is privileged and who is oppressed, uh, how is that expressed, what mm -hmm. does it mean. Uh, people come in having very strong beliefs about uh, sexual orientation and religion are two, usually two of the topics Amazingly that... Amazingly touchy areas. Yes, that and white privilege uh, seem mm -hmm. to get the most uh, arguments. So what do you do? What kind of landscape do you set up in your classroom so that it doesn't become... Mm -hmm a really difficult situation to control where everybody respects everyone else's opinions. Yes, um, I try and do uh, remind everyone of the process in which we acquire our beliefs. So for example, it, you know, first we have to identify what we believe and then we need to talk about, you know, where did we get this belief from? How did we come to, to acquire it? Where did we get our information? And if everyone is doing that, then we can have a productive argument. But if someone is just saying, I believe this because, you know, X person told me, whereas I can tell you I believe this because, you know, I read this, I saw studies on this, this is, uh, you know, what, what the data say, then we're not going to have ever have a productive conversation. Well, it right? seems to me that, that really that uh, I'll, I'm betting that your course contains a lot of information on culture, anthropology, sociology. Absolutely. So that people beca can become aware of the principles uh, and uh, uh, the principles that have put them in the position and given them their thought patterns that they have now. That's exactly right. Yes. Great, because we have run out of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have reached the end of yet another edition of Technology and Education Today. We have been talking with Dr. Michelle Kahn of the University of Houston Clear Lake. I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford. Bye! <laughs>